Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, I've got a fountain pen showdown for you. The two pens we're going to look at. The first one is this. This is a Caveco Sport, nice small pocket pen. Going up against it, we've got another small pocket pen. This is from Colt Pens and it's the Colt Pens Mini Fountain Pen. So join me down on the mat. We'll take a look at the pens. We'll do a writing sample and then we'll give them some scores and see how they compare against each other. So jumping straight in, the first pen we're going to look at today is this. This is the Caveco Sport. I'm just fetching it in this way, just so we can make sure we're getting the right and the correct way up. There we go. Nice green pen, I love green. And this is a really nice green. And then it's just got there in this goldish color, that Caveco spot. I'm going to turn it around because I normally have my pens this way around. It's made of plastic. You know, it's fairly lightweight, it's fairly rugged. So taking a look at the body, at the top, we've got a little gold medallion, well, gold colored, it'll be plastic, I'm guessing. Coming down into the plastic body, we've got a taper, only for about a centimeter. Then we come into this, where we've got these facets. I'm just gonna slowly turn that around again. Hopefully the facets are coming over on the camera. So that goes down, as I said, we, there we've got the Caveco again. When we get near to the end of the cap, it tapers down and then there's a massive drop off down to the body. To be honest, you don't really notice it. I mean, I'm feeling it now and I'm deliberately looking for it, which is why I'm seeing it. But normally I don't notice it. The cap, when we look at it like this, the cap is about two thirds of the length of the pen. Then we come into the barrel barrel halfway along we've got a little tiny line with the teeniest of step downs and then we've got this plastic top with the injection mold in there let's take this off so we go half one just over one turn to take the cap off so that's not too bad let's take that off that reveals this small gold colored nib i mean the whole pen's small but it was bought as a pocket pen, so it is what I expected. Let's take a closer look at this nib. So on the nib, it's a fairly standard Caveco nib. So we come down, we've got a nice little bit of a decorative border on both sides of the breather hole. On the one side, it says Germany. On the other side, it says since 1863. Underneath the breather hole, we've got the Caveco logo. Then underneath that, we've got B for broad, because this is a broad nibbed pen. So coming on back down, we then go from the nib into the section. I've got to be honest, it looks like there's a massive jump up from the nib into the section. I think it's because of the size of the nib. The section is slightly concave, so we come down, then we come out again until we get to these threads. If I take off the body, so the body unscrews just before the threads, that reveals this cartridge. So this is a cartridge converter pen. At the moment, I'm using the cartridge. I do have a converter, but I need to let this cartridge run out first before I put that converter in. So shut this up. And let's put that cap back on. So as you can see, that's a small pen. So let's take that out of the way. And now we'll look at pen number two. Pen number two is another pocket pen. This is from Colt Pens. It's actually made by Caveco. And this is the Colt Pens Mini Fountain Pen. Just walk through the body. So we've got a flat silver colored top. We come on down to the clip. Unlike the Sport, this one has got a clip. and It's nice and springy. Just going to turn this around. On the back, we've got Colt Pens and then by Caveco. So we know what it is and we know who it's made by. So that cap, it's all one width. Just below the bottom of the clip, we've then got a little bit of silver coloring and that metal there, it goes down to the body. So there's no drop off. It's a nice, smooth, seamless transition. The body, similarly, it's the same width. So we come up to the end where we've got the cap and that does taper in until we again come to the other flat end. The one thing I don't like, you can only buy blue. There was no other colors available. Now I know a chance of sight was a limited one-off run, but it still would have been nice to have that option. Let's take the cap off. So we go half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, 
literally a touch over three turns to take that off. And that reveals, again, this fairly small nib. It's a Caveco nib. Let's take a closer look at it. So on this nib, as we can see really, it is just a standard Caveco nib. We've got the decorative board in, we've got Germany, we've got that same Caveco logo. Underneath that though, we've got BB, because this is a double broad nib. When I was ordering this, I thought, well, I've already got a broad, I might as well get a double broad to allow me to compare the Caveco nibs. When we look at the section, there isn't as big a jump from the nib to the section as we saw in the sport. The section then, although it looks like it's going straight out, tapering outwards, there's a slight concaveness near the bottom, and then it starts to go out until we come to the bottom of the body. Let's unscrew the body. So again, it's another one uses a cartridge. So I've got a Caveco cartridge in there. I have actually changed the ink, so it's got my own inks in there. I need to try with this to see if it will take some kind of converter. I don't think it does, but I need to experiment. I do have a couple of the Caveco converters, so I'm going to hopefully be able to fit one of those in. I'm assuming that since it's made by Caveco, it will use a Caveco fitting. If not, I will try some standard cartridges. But to be honest, I'm not going to hold my breath. I don't think it's going to take a converter, but I will try when this ink has run out. So let me fetch in the other pen so we can see them side by side. I'll just use this pen rest here. So at the top here, we've got the Caveco Sport and we've got the Colt pens. Side by side, at the moment, it looks like they're the same length. Just going to take off the caps. Now, these have got to be used posted, so I'm going to post it straight off. When they're posted, the Caveco is ever so slightly longer. And you can tell that when you're writing. We'll look at measurements in a minute. Seeing as we've got these there, let's fetch in a couple of comparisons. So the first pen I'm going to fetch in, this is a Pilot Metropolitan. Look at the difference in size. I'm also going to fetch in a Lamy Safari. There we go. Just look at that. I'm trying to get the end of the nibs all lined up. There we go. So we can get a good idea for the length. Don't these two pocket pens look babies compared to the Metro and the Safari? Let's pop the caps on so we can see a look at them capped. I say I'm not going to bother showing you these pens unposted. I might do that when I do the writing sample because to be honest, they're designed to be posted. So there we go, there's all three pens in the posted position. So the reason why I'm using these two pens, well there's two reasons in this particular one. The first one is I use both these pens in as many videos as I can because most people have either seen or own at least one of these two, if not both of them. So there's a rough idea about how big they are. And I think that's good as a size comparison. In this particular one, it's also good for a price comparison. So I'm going to look at the prices. I'm going to start here with the Caveco. So the Caveco Sport, it cost me 35 Australian dollars. The Colt Pens Mini, that was 50 Australian dollars. The Pilot Metropolitan was 38 Australian dollars. And the Lamy Safari, that was 37 Australian dollars. So they're all very much in that same ballpark in terms of cost. Let's clear these off. We'll do some measurements and we'll look at their weights. So here's my trusty rule of measurement. So we'll start with the spar to fetch that in. So in terms of capped, this is 10.5 centimetres. Uncapped, 10.1 centimetres. When I put the cap on, that's 13.3 centimetres. The width of the body, so the width here, that's 1.06 centimetres. The width of the cap, that's 1.34. And then the section, that goes from point. 0.95 to 0.98 centimeters. So, as I said, it's not a massive pen. We'll fetch in the Cult Pens Mini. So this one, very similar in terms of cap to 10.5 centimeters. Now we're going to start to see some differences. Uncapped, 9.4, it's minute. Posted. Just move that closer, 12.4 centimeters. The body width, 0.93 so a lot thinner as well and the width of the cap that comes in at 1.05 with the section going from 0.78 to 
so it is a lot smaller. Let's remove this and fetch in the scales of measurement. So in come the scales. Let's get that so we can see the screen. There we go. Let's turn it on and we're ready to go. So the Trafeco Sport, we'll start with that. 11 grams, that's light, isn't it? The cap, four grams. That means it's a very light pen, isn't it? We'll look at the cult pens one. 17 grams, so a little bit more substantial in terms of weight. The cap by itself, six grams. So although still a light pen, nowhere near as bad as that Kaveco Sport. I'll just move the scales out of the way and I'll fetch in my trusty notepad. This notepad, it's made by Black and & Red and it uses the Oxford Optic paper. So it's nice fountain pen friendly paper. The first pen we're going to look at Again, it's going to be the Kaveco Sport. And with this, the ink I've chosen is by Cult Pens and it's deep dark green. Now, when I got this pen, it came with a blue Kaveco ink. And I've got to be honest, I absolutely hated it. It made the pen feel horrible to use. Could have been psychological because I didn't like the ink color. It was so wishy-washy. At the time, I was tempted to actually put the pen in the bin. It was just so horrible. But I persisted and after about half a day, I got rid of all the ink from that cartridge and I filled it with this Cult Pens Deep Dark Green. What a difference it made to me. And as I say, this could be psychological, but I now enjoy using this. Let's do a little bit of writing so you can see. So before I start writing, I'm going to show you unposted. Look at that. It's not, it, I could maybe get away with it, but certainly not for long term. Posted, that's not too bad. So we've got here a Kaveco Sport. As I said, comes with a broad nib. The ink, cult pens. Deep, dark, green. I love the name of this. It's deep, it's dark. You can just hear the spookiness of it, can't you? I think it sounds really awesome. Drying times, so we go media. Not too bad. 10 seconds. Dry enough quite nicely. 30 seconds. Still smudging a bit, one minute. Little tiny smudge, but not really enough to write home about. Is there any line variation? Let's have a look. So this is with no pressure. Now I'm going to add in a bit of pressure. And let's do some S's or figure of eights. Not really that much in the way of line variation. Let's just go across as well. So again, no pressure, bit of pressure, getting unpleasant to write when I'm putting the pressure on. But again, no line variation. I'm going to move the mic so you can hear the pen write. So as you no doubt heard, there's a lot of scratchy noises coming off there. It feels rough when you're using it. I personally like that. I like the feedback because it's that tactile nature when you're writing. You know, when I use pens which are overly glassy, I think they feel horrible. It's, to be honest, it's like using an Apple Pencil on an iPad screen. It, it doesn't feel right to me. Whereas this, it's got that nice bit of scratchiness that makes it pleasant to use. But at times it's also got a bit of smoothness. And I do think sometimes, especially when it's scratching more, it's because I put too much pressure on the nib, which is digging it into the paper a little bit. But overall, it's a fairly nice writing experience. So let's look at the next pen. Next pen. There we go. That's the Cult Pens Mini. So in here, well, I've got to use a Cult Pens ink, haven't I? So I've got Cult Pens Little Chris. This is a gorgeous sheen in ink. There's a blue background here. I don't know if it's maybe even blue black. I find it quite hard to really come up with color names sometimes. But then on top of that, we've got this gorgeous red sheen here. Just look at that. I think it looks so nice. So let's look at this one. So 
unposted it's not usable for me there's no way i could write with that posted it's just about there still a little bit on the short side for me but that doesn't matter because what matters is how it writes so we've got here a Colt Pens Mini Fountain Pen which is a double broad that little bit of a hard start that's because I've had that cap on and off and I've been touching the end of the nib whilst I've been doing that so I just did a little scribble on another piece of paper to get it right in again the ink again Colt Pens Little Chris. Really nice ink. Hopefully we'll see a bit of sheen on this. I do have a better example on Tommy River paper, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Drying times, immediate, fairly wet. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. Finally, one minute. After a minute, slight teeniest bit of a smudge, but that's more or less dry. Let's look at line variation. So with no pressure, and then adding some pressure on. Slightly more ink coming off, but not too much of a difference in terms of line width. Let's do some figure of eight. Actually quite like the look of this. It does, there does seem to be a bit of character there. Let's do some cross lines. Again, not much in the way of line variation. I'm going to reposition the mic so you can hear the pen writing. That's nowhere near as scratchy as the previous pen. You know, there's still some feedback there. It's not glassy smooth. You know, you're aware you're writing. There's still that tactile to it. But yeah, certainly nowhere near as scratchy as the broad nib. So maybe I need to do a little bit of work on that broad nib just to smooth it out a bit. Now on here, we can already see that sheen coming through. Let me just see if I can catch the light a bit better. You know, we've got that gorgeous blue background. But just look at the way that red's coming through. That sheen is gorgeous. I will show you as well on some Tommy River paper in a minute. I enjoy writing with this pen. Again, problem with it is too small. But that's just a personal choice. If you've got smaller hands, it may be perfect for you. So it's time to give the pens some scars. So let me fetch both of them back in there. So there's a the Kaveco. I'll put it even so we can read the name. There's the Kaveco Spars back in as well. So we've got these two pens. What do I think about them? What scores do I give them? Well, we'll start by looking at the Kaveco Sport. It's a plastic body. It doesn't really make much of a difference because it means it's light. And it is light. It's very small and it's very light. It's handy for carrying around in pockets. Now, I wear normally either cargo shorts or cargo trousers. So in terms of that, and a small notepad fits in my pockets really nice. I've always got a pen and something to write on wherever I am. The ink it came with, that's what let this down for me. I don't know, maybe it was just me, but I absolutely hated it but once I'd swapped it out and put in this deep dark green well it was really nice let's look at some more writing samples so we've seen here on the optic paper so on the Tomai River paper here we go this is 52 GSM Tomai River and this is actually by Gale and Leather but on here it's nice I'd see not too much in the way of shading so you're not going to see a lot of character in it it's a gorgeous green though it's an unusual green as i've called out on here what a difference the ink makes it really does because with that initial ink i was willing to throw the pen in the bin the pen's comfortable it doesn't feel overly short when i'm writing but it packs up so it's nice and fits in most places it's nice and smooth with a little bit of feedback certainly on the tomai river it's a lot smoother than it is on this oxford paper but that's fine i quite understand that 
Got to give it some mats. So what we're going to do for this is pen looks. In terms of the pen looks for this, I think it looks really nice. So I'm going to give it nine out of 10. The writing experience, as I said, it's very scratchy. You know, it's nice. I like the feedback, but just that little bit too scratchy. So I've got to hit it for that. So I'm going to say, let's give that an eight out of 10. Ink flow, absolutely no issues. The pen keeps up. Not a lot of line variation. Didn't expect that. Ink flow, yep, yeah, nine out of 10. Value for money. Well, this is always the hard one isn't it how would you put a value for money mark on a pen so i've got to look at what it costs so it costs 35 australian dollars i've got to look at it's a little bit light for me so i need to take that in mind i also need to buy the converter extra so that's an additional cost so that all comes into the value for money so value for money for this i'm going to give it 8 out of 10 that means total score 8.5 out of 10. We'll now look at the Colt Pens pen. That's quite a mouthful, isn't it? So let's look at the Tomai River paper. So here's a photograph of it. It's a small pen. It really is. It's tiny. It feels small in the hand. That's a shame. I think a little bit extra length and it would have been a lot better. It's very thin. I find if I'm doing more than a sentence, it starts to make my hand hurt. Plus it's just so thin. I love the ink in here. I love the double broad nib. I think that allows this ink to really show its colours and I think it's so nice. I will show you a live photo of this Tomai River paper in a minute so we can have a look at the sheen. One of the things I found with it is a couple of times when I've been unscrewing the cap I've also unscrewed the section so I need to again make sure every time I unscrew the cap that I tighten that section up a little bit. The nib it's so smooth it really does make up for a lot of the other issues because it's a gorgeous nib. Let's take a look at the actual page there it goes. Now, I'm not sure how much of this will come through on camera, but I'm just going to try here. Just look at that gorgeous red sheen. But then when it's flatter, you can see the blue. And I think that really makes this so interesting to, to look at and to read. I could sit and do this for hours, I tell you. It's so nice. But we've got to now give the pen some scores. What are we going to give this one? So pen looks. I've got to hit this because it's only got that one colour, so I, I had to get it in blue. Blue's a fine colour, but it's not something I would normally go for. I like the way we've got the silver. That does accent it quite nicely. But it's so thin. So looks-wise, I'm not as impressed as with the Kaveco Sport. So I'm only going to give this 8 out of 10. Writing experience... Yeah, it's beautiful. Really nice. Really enjoy it. I love the fact it's not overly rough. You know, it feels like it's more gliding on the paper, but you can feel it gliding. Whereas with the Sport, you could feel it scratching. So writing experience, I'm going to give this 9 out of 10. Ink flow, well, as we can see from the writing here, apart from that little bit at the beginning, which was my fault because of having the cap on and off and touching the nib and messing around with it. Ink flow is gorgeous. We get a really nice line. It's really consistent. We get a gorgeous sheen from the ink because the ink's flowing quite nicely. Nine out of 10. Value for money. This one is 50 Australian dollars, but I think for what you get is actually good. You've got more weight to it because of the metal in the pen. So it feels more substantial in the hand. I can feel it when it's in my pocket. So I know I've got it with me. Yes, tiny bit on the short side, but not enough to stop me using it. I would have liked if it came with a converter. At the moment, I don't even know if a converter will fit. But again, that's neither here nor there really, because the key thing is I can get the ink in. I enjoy using this pen. If I'm going to reach for one of these two pens, I'd always go for this Colt Pens Mini Pen over the Sport. So in that respect, you know, I do like the pen. So value for money for me, I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10, which gives it a total score of 8.75 out of 10. So that means that it's the winner of this showdown. They're both nice pens, don't get me wrong. They're both enjoyable pens. I would highly recommend them for anybody. I think as starter pens, they're really good. They're really worthwhile having. I wish I hadn't waited so long to have got them because I think I would have used them a lot more over the past year. But this is my showdown of the Kaveco Sport and the Colt Pens Mini Fountain Pen. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What do you think about these pens? Have you got them? Have you tried them? Are there any other inks which may be worth me trying in them? Please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. If you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, or well, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.